see exactly what happened, but I tried to go into the crowd just now, and it appeared someone was down on the ground. Local law enforcement was holding, holding. It looks like they're escorting someone out right now. The crowd, I, it's unclear, that, but it, there was some sort of apparent threat for Secret Service to evacuate the, the candidate backstage. The crowd was not letting me film what was going on. I was pushed. Uh, I wasn't able to see exactly what happened. The crowd's now chanting USA. I'll give it back to you because we're being taken out. And so from my vantage point here, there is definitely moving. Whoever was involved in that commotion is being moved out of the crowd. We're not sure if Donald Trump is going to come back onto the stage or not. Um, but okay. we're going to win Michigan. It's a state that has voted solidly Democrat in the last six presidential elections. But the Trump campaign is convinced it is still in play. Trump's family hitting the ground hard in the final stretch. And we are going to win Michigan and we are yeah. going to win Pennsylvania. Yeah. Ivanka speaking at a women's forum this week, Donald Jr. holding court on college campuses, and Eric thanking volunteers. Look at that, I like that. He stopped by this grassroots campaign office 30 minutes outside Detroit. We're going to win Michigan. I mean, the amount of signs is incredible. Clinton's team, though, says campaign signs don't equate to votes. What do you say to that? We'll see on Tuesday. I mean, we'll see on Tuesday. Michonne Maddock opened this office back in August. Together with several other women, they have spent tens of thousands of their own money to support Trump. You're putting a lot of your own money a into lot. this. Why? Oh, absolutely. We we need this to happen. We understand that this is a grassroots movement. We see Democrats coming in. We see independents. We see people people coming in who have never voted before and they're going I'm voting this time. These two volunteers say they have made nearly 4,000 phone calls combined in the past week. Can Donald Trump really win this state? Absolutely. I mean, especially over the past week, there's been a, a significant shift in the feedback from the voters. It's I'm voting for Trump. My neighbors are voting for Trump. In the final week of the campaign, Donald Trump and the RNC spending about $900,000 on ads in Michigan. Hillary Clinton and the super PACs behind her pouring in $2.3 million. Elections coming. We want a good turnout. The unexpected race in Michigan has the Clinton campaign on the move. Bill Clinton made a surprise stop in Detroit this week. Bernie Sanders stopped in two spots around the state. And Clinton surrogates continue to talk her up to supporters. And we've got people all around the block here, thousands of people standing in line. The Trump campaign, though, saying the Hillary camp is panicking, are they? No, absolutely not. They're in it, wishful thinking on their part. Hundreds waited for Clinton at her Detroit rally Friday. The head of a local charter school saying he's doing what he can to get out the vote. So we're making sure that we get, get the kids out here to make sure that their parents know they have to get out and vote for Hillary. Go Hillary! CNN poll of polls has Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump nearly in a dead heat among likely voters there. The Democratic candidate is edging out her rival by just two points. Just two weeks ago, Hillary Clinton had about an eight-point lead. Joining me right now from Manchester, New Hampshire, is CNN correspondent Chris Freight. So does anyone have a good explanation for this turnaround? Well, I think it's all get out the vote, Fred, and that is what's happening here this weekend. Hillary Clinton campaign telling me this will be the biggest mobilization of their volunteers of the election season, and that makes good sense. We're only days from November 8th. 12,000 volunteers fanning out across the state, more than 60 locations, including their field offices. The Clinton campaign saying they've made more than 2 million phone calls. They've got it out and knocked on 600,000 doors, and some of their top surrogates are out here this weekend as well. Elizabeth Warren, the senator from the neighboring state of Massachusetts out here uh, getting people fired up, getting those progressives fired up in New Hampshire to get to the polls. And Madeleine Albright, the former Secretary of State, also out here. Now, on the GOP side, Donald Trump also has some big names out here, and he is also trying to mobilize those voters. 1.4 million door knocks, 1.3 million phone calls. So he's reaching out to voters here in New Hampshire as well, along with those crucial independents. And we saw Jeff Sessions, an Alabama senator, big Trump advisor, doing uh, get out the vote uh, uh, activity this uh, this Saturday afternoon. And uh, that is something that will continue through the weekend. Mike Pence on Sunday coming to New Hampshire, Fred. And, and so, Chris, you know, you know, Chris Christie was supposed to campaign there for Donald Trump. Um, but now in the throes of an investigation that doesn't look so good, you know, for many people in his um, administration, uh, what do you know about his whereabouts or how this is impacting the Trump campaign? 
Yeah, Fred. Well, uh, you know, Jeff Sessions was supposed to be campaigning with New Jersey Governor Chris Christie today, and Christie canceled those appearances after two of his top allies were found guilty in the Bridgegate scandal. You remember uh, that was a scandal where these two top aides have now been found guilty of orchestrating lane closures to the George Washington Bridge. Those lane closures caused huge traffic jams in New Jersey, and they were doing that to get back at a Democratic mayor who did not endorse Chris Christie. Now, those allies said in the, uh, on the stand, in testimony, that Chris Christie knew about those lane closures as they happened. Chris Christie has maintained that he did not know about those lane closures until uh, the news broke. And I asked Jeff Sessions, I said, you know, uh, Senator, should Chris Christie be in charge of Donald Trump's transition team? Trump is running on draining the swamp in Washington. Can Chris Christie head the transition when it's been shown that he has corruption in his own administration? Here's what Jeff Sessions told me, Fred. With Donald Trump saying we need to drain the swamp of Washington, is it appropriate to have Chris Christie heading the transition effort uh, going forward if Donald Trump were to win? Well, I don't know anything about that uh, uh, or what his plans were today. Uh, certainly, he's not been charged with anything. And uh, but this campaign is focused on a, a commitment to a higher ethical standard. So you're all right. He should stay then. You're you're, you're fine with it. I just I yes or no. I mean, should he stay as transition chair or not? Should I, he go? I, I don't know any reason why he shouldn't. So Jeff Sessions there saying, I don't see any reason why Chris Christie shouldn't stay at the top of the transition team. We'll see if this news about his top allies being convicted in that Bridgegate scandal changes things, Fred. But I can tell you, he's not out here on the ground today. And Chris Christie, very popular here in New Hampshire. He knows how to do those town halls. He connected. He, remember, campaigned against Donald Trump here in New Hampshire. He is not on the stump today. So we'll see if uh, he makes it out a little bit later in the next couple of days, Fred. All right, Chris Freights, thank you so much in Manchester, New Hampshire. All right, we're going to have much more in the newsroom from the nation's capital right after this. As a Marriott Rewards member, I can embrace a world full of surprising moments. The new Marriott portfolio of hotels now has 30 brands in over 110 countries. So no matter where you go, you are here. Join or link accounts today. Celebrate the Joseph A. Bank November sale. Buy one, get one free on almost everything in the store. Now, all Traveler and 1905 suits are just $249. Plus, all dress shirts are two for $89. Only at Joseph A. Bank. I live in Bristol, Virginia. And now, I'm in Bristol, Tennessee. On this side of the road is Virginia, and on this side, it's Tennessee. No matter which state in the country you live in, you could save hundreds on car insurance by switching to GEICO. Look, I'm in Virginia. I'm in Tennessee. Virginia, Tennessee. And now I'm in uh, Virginia C. See how much you could save on car insurance. Or am I in Tennessee? Hmm. Hi, I'm Barry Sloan with New Tech, your business solutions company. Does your business need money? Whether you need 10,000 or 10 million, you can count on NewTek, the nation's largest non-bank government guaranteed lender. NewTek can help your business expand and grow. With a simple phone interview, we can pre-qualify you in just 48 hours. And with rates as low as 6%, you can see why so many businesses turn to NewTek. To see how easy getting a loan can be, contact NewTek, your business solutions company today. Home restoration takes time and money, so don't renovate, rejuvenate. Rejuvenate is the number one selling floor care product at the Home Depot. Rejuvenate's super concentrated formula is the only floor finish that renews your floors in only one easy mop and application. It fills and scratches, restores shine, and protects hardwood, laminate, linoleum, vinyl, and ceramic tile. Easily remove dirt and grime from your floors with Rejuvenate's No Bucket Floor Cleaner. This pH balanced cleaner is safe for all flooring surfaces, it's easy to use, and leaves behind a beautiful streak free shine revitalize your hardwood floors with rejuvenate professional wood floor restorers this polyurethane finish renews the shine and creates a durable long-lasting barrier to keep your hardwood floors looking brand new for years got newer and laminate floors that need a pick-me-up get rejuvenate shine refresher it cleans protects and eliminates footprints and smudges leaving a shine that lasts for weeks so don't renovate rejuvenate make your home like new again for the holidays with rejuvenate available at these fine retailers now that FedEx has helped us simplify our e-commerce, we can focus on bigger issues, like our passive-aggressive environment. We're not passive-aggressive. We're going to have passive-aggressive. Hey, hey, hey. There are no bad suggestions here, no matter how lame they are. Well said, Anne. I've always admired how you just say what's in your head. 
without thinking. It's very brave. Good point, Ted. You're living proof that looks aren't everything. Thank you. Welcome. So, FedEx helps simplify our e-commerce business, and this is not a passive-aggressive environment. I just want to say you guys are doing a great job. This is not supposed to be. FedEx, helping small business simplify e-commerce. We could, yes. Right. All right, welcome back. We're less than three days away from the presidential election. The two leading candidates wanting to end up right there at the White House. And the latest in the CNN poll of polls, let's take a look. Hillary Clinton holds a five-point edge nationally over Donald Trump. In the next hour, the candidates will hold dueling campaign events in key battleground states. Trump will hold a rally in Wilmington, North Carolina. And Hillary Clinton will take the stage in Pembroke Pines, Florida, South Florida, and will bring you both of those events as they happen. All right, voter turnout could be critical on Tuesday. It will be. It proved to be a huge part of President Obama's victories. And Republicans who had a smaller ground operation back in 2012 say they are now stepping up their efforts to drive voters to the polls. CNN chief political correspondent Dana Bash has more. On the ground. I'm going to mark you down for 12 o'clock on Saturday for phone banking. On the stump. If we vote, we win. Get out and vote. It's now all about getting out the vote. For Republicans, that means learning from their mistakes. After their lagging 2012 operation failed, the Republican National Committee began working three years ago to step up their game. How is what you're doing in 2016 different from what you did in 2012? We are 100 miles away from where we were in 2012. The biggest difference? Activists now use this phone app to get out the vote. It will show you their part, party affiliation, how reliable they are as a voter, um, their age, stuff like that. You just click that voter, do take survey, boom, right there. And it gives volunteers what's called dynamic scripting, prompting different pitches to voters depending on their answers. Information all instantly sent back to RNC headquarters. We need to talk to low propensity Republicans and make sure they know when the election is and figure out who they're going to support so we can drive them out. Now, in the final push, thousands of staffers and volunteers are using that app in battleground states across the country. The RNC, leading Trump's ground operation, says they will complete 17 million door knocks by election day up from 11.5 million in 2012 it's all very ambitious but it's been done before by the democrats i'm doing great what's your name republican strategists admit they're trying to emulate the obama ground machine that crushed the gop for two cycles my name is mary perkins williams i'm a volunteer armies of democratic activists are spread out over the same key states as republicans Clinton campaign aides say they've signed up some one million volunteer shifts for the last 96 hours alone. In some ways, Team Clinton is old school, using paper and clipboards, inputted and tallied at the end of each day. Still, the Clinton system is very high tech, using social and digital media to build on that vaunted Obama operation. Text plan to 47246. It's now going to walk me through making my entire voting plan. A personalized plan for where to vote, when to vote, and even how to get there. Forcing people to get specific and to give a commitment. Exactly. I am taking public transit. I'm voting in the morning and I know my polling location so I can get a reminder straight to my phone, straight to my pocket on election day to tell me to go vote. Click. Gary joins us now from, from Charlotte. Now that the event is over and they've heard President Obama speak, did the people you spoke to, I don't know if you had a chance to catch up with them, do they feel any differently about Clinton? Well, you got to consider that most people who came here came here because they like Barack Obama. They like who he's is and I like how he speaks so obviously he would be influential so we talked to a couple of people we talked to a woman and her 13 year old daughter the 13 year old daughter was saying she's like Hillary Clinton the whole time the mother said I wasn't gonna vote for Hillary Clinton I wasn't gonna vote for anybody just the local and state races but Barack Obama has convinced me to vote for Hillary Clinton we talked to another woman who said she was considering Hillary Clinton or Gary Johnson listened to Barack Obama behind me a short time ago and says now I'm convinced I'm going to vote for Hillary Clinton so no big surprise here what matters is the big picture the other African American throughout the state of North Carolina, the ones who weren't here, the ones who weren't in Fayetteville earlier today, the ones who weren't in Chapel Hill at the University of North Carolina two days ago. What matters is what they decide to do, and that answer we won't know until Tuesday. Anderson.
Okay. Gary, thanks very much. Back with the panel. I mean, it is interesting to hear from that man who went to the event, but he still says he's undecided about who he's going to vote for. He says he's not going to vote for Trump, but maybe a, a third party candidate. Which is why these rallies, as Gary pointed out so well in that piece, are so important for Hillary Clinton. I thought one of the most interesting things that that President Obama said in his rally today, and he said before, but it really struck me the way he said it today was, I trust her. That it was clearly not an accident uh, that, that he went for that particular issue. Uh, and it said so much. And it said to a lot of the voters that have not decided, that Gary talked to, uh, who went to hear him, guys, you know, it's okay. She's, you, you might not feel that comfortable with her, not the way you did with me, but you should. He's a character witness, but the fact that he used the word trust, given the fact that that is her Achilles heel, says a lot. David, um, do surrogates matter? Do these big rallies matter? And I ask this both for, for Donald Trump and for Hillary Clinton. Obviously, Hillary Clinton has a lot of, uh, you know, big-name Democrats out there uh, acting as surrogates for her, but Donald Trump has also had these huge rallies. Yeah, well, the, but, but it isn't it, because there's only one Donald Trump, as he would be the first to say, and he can only make... Oh, he can only do one rally at a time. You can cover a lot more ground when you have these, uh, a, you know, a uh, performers who can go out and be surrogates for you. And what the president's doing here for her is is very, very valuable. So you think it's not just people who are already going to vote for Hillary Clinton? Well, plainly not. Yeah. I mean, you saw some people there, but I and and the one thing I would say about Gary's piece is it is not just the people who show up because these events get covered widely on local television. So when when the President of the United States comes to a market uh, and has a rally like that, it is big news and people hear a lot of that message. Let's be frank, this is the great sadness of the Clintons and the Clinton campaign, that they have not been able to make as much headwind with African American voters as they believe to use a bad word, they're entitled to. Given their histories, both Bill and Hillary Clinton have been advocates of civil rights from when they were young people. They have really been in the trenches. It's been the constant of their political lives. It's taken some real courage when and where they did it. And, and they feel that they haven't uh, been able to succeed this time when, in fact, they should have been able There's to. But she has, the same, she has the same problem. Let me just say she has the same problem with young African Americans yes. as she has with young white. She, she is an older That's right. candidate. She doesn't relate particularly well to these younger voters. The president relates better to these voters, and they're a particular target. Angela? So I was just going to say, I don't know, and I hope that it's not an entitlement thing for, for Hillary and Bill Clinton. I would say that there is a tremendous amount of ground to make up for with millennial black voters. Part of the reason for that is they have experienced the impact of the crime bill, what it's done to families. And thankfully, on the trail this year, Bill Clinton and Hillary Clinton have covered some ground apologizing for it. What she did that was phenomenal yesterday, I think one of the best things that she could have done was talk about the Central Park Five, yeah. was talk about this woman who, who experienced housing discrimination at the hands of Donald Trump and, and his father. Those are the kinds of things that they frankly should have been doing a lot sooner, but it's better late than never. Going high again, but the only thing I would say is, is that Donald Trump does not have the A-level surrogates, you're right, um, but he does have his grown kids, and I think that's a that they're back on the trail, and his wife, I think that's right. a very big advantage. The other thing about Donald Trump, which I admire, uh, President George W. Bush mostly liked to be at home in his bed at, uh, <laughs> at the end of a day. Donald Trump has had more of these big rallies. He's sure. indefatigable, right. and the, ra the, the size of the rallies are huge, right. and it's something that we haven't seen before. For, and he really is making an impact. Just quickly with the black community, I think Donald Trump has proffered a very interesting case. Yes, Hillary, you have been working on civil rights and you have been in government for 30 years, but look, you, are you better off than you were then? No. The black community is better off. There are, more, okay. there, are more, there are more blacks on food stamps. There are more blacks oh, and, 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 uh, no, 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 unemployed, it, it, it and it has, hasn't it improved has under think, President I Obama. One, no, that's that's not true I think one of the most effective things that President Obama has done as he does these rallies is when he reminds people, especially these days that Donald Trump has stayed on message so much, is that if this is a person who's going to disrespect women before he gets to the White House, he's going to do it in the White House. If this is somebody who's going to disrespect the Constitution, now he's going to do it in the we White House. we got to go. Uh, That's very next. impactful. One of the undecided, yes, four days out, some voters do, yet, do not yet know if they're going to vote for Trump, Clinton, or another candidate. Why is that? Some insight in a moment. It can do those three, and they think they have a pretty good chance of getting New Hampshire as well.
They're still competitive in Arizona. I'm going to leave that one off the board for now or even say Arizona sticks with its DNA and goes Republican. If it plays out this way, that's a pretty overwhelming Clinton victory, 322 to 215 with that one congressional district in Nebraska uh, still to be determined. That's how the Clinton campaign sees it playing out. What does Donald Trump have to do? have to do to get this? He's got to find a way to get Nevada. He has to keep that Arizona. He has to say, no way, I'm taking Florida. He must take North Carolina as well. Those are mandatory. Trump gets New Hampshire. That gets a 268. And if the district here went Clinton's way, it would be a 269, 269. Is that likely to happen? Of course not. But is it possible? That's one of the things you look at heading into the final weekend. But if you want to come back to the main map and just take the more rational perspective, if you look at it, Clinton's close to the finish line. She leads in one, two, and she believes three of these states, even though the polling is kind of dicey there. So you'd have to say advantage Clinton, Trump in the hunt, a little bit closer, I think, heading into the final weekend than anybody would have thought, oh, say, 10 days ago. Anderson? Yeah, uh, John King, thanks very much. Let's bring in the panel. Seen in uh, political analyst, a Clinton biographer, Carl Bernstein, who was once portrayed by Dustin Hoffman meeting with a source at a <laughs> rooftop restaurant about three blocks from here. <laughs> also, CNN senior political commentator, former top Obama advisor and happy Cubs fan, David Axelrod. CNN chief political correspondent, Dana Bash. Plus, on the, uh, to my left, uh, Kelly uh, McEnany, Trump supporter, uh, and also Angela Rye, who is obviously a uh, Clinton supporter. Appreciate all of you guys being here. Uh, let's talk about New Hampshire. Everybody's appropriately dressed. That's right. It's hard. Right. Oh. It's actually indigo. <laughs> <laughs> right. uh, Dan, I mean, New Hampshire, uh, no longer uh, clear uh, which way it's going to go. It really is remarkable how these polls have been tightening uh, in a lot of states that Democrats felt really comfortable and, frankly, Republicans thought were out of reach. Uh, New Hampshire is one. Michigan is another. New Hampshire is probably more gettable than Michigan, uh, just because, to use John's term, the DNA of the state is different. New Hampshire has gone back and forth more in recent history than Michigan. Uh, but it, it, it does kind of go to... The fundamental that in these closing days, Donald Trump seems to be the one with the momentum as opposed to Hillary Clinton. So I think at the end of the day, although we were talking about last night, the Republicans' ground operation has stepped up dramatically. Mm -hmm. It still feels like I it is going to be, big picture, a test way, between organization and momentum and energy and enthusiasm. Uh, uh, the former governor of New Hampshire, John Sununu, uh, was speaking for, for Donald Trump today and made a headline, which I don't think he's made in decades, but let's, uh, uh, let's play that. <laughs> Playing a little bit off of what Bob Smith said, his imitation of uh, Bill Clinton and talking about Hillary. Do you think Bill was referring to Hillary when he said, I did not have sex with that woman? <laughs> Up. Hilarious. Yeah. You know, uh, I will say this. He hasn't. He may not have made headlines in a long time, but when he was making headlines, it was often by saying the wrong thing, mm -hmm. and he hasn't lost his touch. <laughs> I don't think that helps. Uh -huh. That doesn't help Donald Trump. So that's not what you want your surrogates out there doing. But let me just say about the race overall. I think this race has been tightening for some time. I think the distance from that Access Hollywood tape, plus the end of the debates, which were difficult for Donald Trump, and the way he reacted to them was difficult, has been good for him because he's been a much more disciplined candidate. Uh, he made a lot of the Ob Obamacare rate story, obviously the FBI story. But I think what's happened is this race has returned to a normal Democrat-Republican race in a, in a closely divided country. Uh, and Democrats still have the advantage in such a race, and you see it on that electoral map. So I think Donald Trump is still in the position of having to draw an inside straight between now and Tuesday, and I think it's going to be tough to do. You know, Carl, I mean, it's interesting. You look at... Um the CNN poll of polls has only Hillary Clinton's lead has only shrunk by one in the, in the poll of polls she was up six points before the Comey letter uh, tonight one week later she's up uh, five points uh, do you think more has been made of of the impact of the Comey letter no I think that it was helpful to Donald Trump and I think that the excitement factor that the Trump campaign has been playing on is part of the real dynamic here and they're throwing a lot of Hail Marys right now not the least of which is about all of us up here if they they know that if they can create enough sense of excitement 
among all of us and in the press, that that has a dynamic of its own. And that Sarah Murray's piece was so first rate because it brought us back to what the real situation based on her reporting is, that their internals also are showing how difficult this is for Trump to do, and the internals of the Clinton campaign give them a feeling of some real comfort, and at the same time, sure, they're nervous as hell as anybody would be at this point, uh, when there is this dynamic that shows Trump has been creating excitement, gaining ground, but still, we're talking about Hail Marys. And, and I mean, Kelly, any time the focus has been on Hillary Clinton is generally not good for Hillary Clinton, and some of the focus has really been on Donald Trump. It's generally not good for Donald Trump, and the focus has been on Hillary Clinton since the Comey letter. That's exactly right, and that's one of the reasons I think that this race is not analogous to 2012. You know, you've heard some pundits say, well, R Romney seemed to make a comeback, and then he lost the election. But I think there's some intangibles here. One of them, as you point out, the focus is on Hillary Clinton. The FBI bombshell is one. Number two, I think there's an enthusiasm factor with Trump, and we hear it among conservative circles that we didn't hear with Mitt Romney. He does. He is packing rallies to the extent of 20, 30,000. And then finally, I think there is this Brexit effect that we haven't seen since 1980, where people forget Ronald Reagan was demonized in the same way Donald Trump was. You know, you had Car you had a uh, you had Carter coming out saying he is engaging in stirrings of hatred. Anyone who stands with him is raising the specter of white sheets, is what someone in the administration said. And people turned out and they voted for him, and they were perhaps afraid to say it. So I think there's a lot of intangibles here that that don't make it like 2012. Angela, I mean, as a Democrat, does do you fear a, a hidden Trump vote? There certainly could be a hidden Trump vote. And what I will say is the one comfort comforting factor that I have is I know, for example, in the real clear politics poll, Barack Obama and Mitt Romney were essentially tied at this point. And right now, Hillary Clinton is not tied, I think, in real clear politics. I know CNN has the poll of polls, but I think she's up by at least three. So I'm comforted a little bit by that. Anderson, that has not taken away my nightmares. I think mm -hmm. that every day, every day, this election cycle, we have seen something new. Um, today, thankfully, it was about a reporter that had to walk something back that was just frankly egregious on the Clinton side. I just wonder how much time we have to clean up some of these messes, some of them just false scandals at this point. David, I mean, you know uh, what it was like in, in 2012 for, for uh, then-President Obama against Mitt Romney. Do you think Hillary Clinton is in a better spot than, than, than President Obama was against Romney? Well, I think she's in a comparable spot. The fact is the polls weren't as good uh, for Obama. I mean, there was a sense that this was a tied race. A lot of the same stories, a lot of Republicans saying, God, Mitt's rallies are huge and this is really encouraging and so on. But at the end of the day, <clears throat> first of all, we had our own data, which was uh, more reliable, frankly, because it was calling of people from voter uh, files. And so you knew what their vote history was. So you knew who the the certain voters were. You didn't have to rely on their own testimony. And that created a more accurate polling. So even as the public polls said uh, that uh, that Romney and Obama were tied, we were up four consistently in our data down the following uh, down the last week. I think that both campaigns probably had better polling than this public polling. So um, you know, I think this is a traditional. Republican Democrat race as 2012 was in what is a very polarized country but where the electoral map favors uh, Democrats and where the demography favors Democrats and so you know we'll know what we can spin uh, from now until Tuesday and then and then we'll know but God, nothing's uh, about this has been traditional and now suddenly it's traditional <laughs> I know uh, better late than never I guess the Hillary hatred fact is a real difference Huge. between what happened in 2008 and 9. That's the wild card here. Mm. Not twice. I gotta tell you, that Mitt, Rom Mitt, Mitt Romney was a little better liked than Donald Trump as well. But, so, I mean, there's this is there, no, real, no one's going to win a popularity this, contest. This is That's unique. True. This I have to unique. say, though, I, 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 I understand what you're saying, but I think 2012 is a good analogous race because at that point we had the Tea Party rising up talking about taking our country back, right? So I think there was still a hatred factor. Maybe not as severe, but there was definitely a hatred factor. All right, a lot more ahead tonight, including President Obama going uh, all out right now in North Carolina. We'll be right back. To respect themselves. The idea that we would put in place in the most prominent, most powerful office in the land, somebody who undermines that? And, and the worst part about it, Charlotte, is we have begun to treat this as if it's normal. 
Anderson Cooper 360. Brought to you by Hainan Airline. Cherry.